Hello everybody, welcome to the Science History Room. Today we are taking a look at Ableton Note. This will be a deep dive tutorial, everything you can do with Ableton Note, everything. Right, so I'm going to explain the whole thing. When you first open it, you will be presented with this kind of page here where you can see sessions and sets and things that already come with it. You can make your new ones. Where it says Ableton Cloud, I have Ableton Cloud enabled and uh, that's easy to do. You just set up your account at Ableton. Then you can go and enable cloud. That's free. You can do all this stuff down here by tapping these little dots. This is a way you can set up Ableton Cloud. This is where you can get a free version of Ableton Live Lite 12, which is very good, which is what I also did. Although, to be fair, I already had it. Uh, you can also export core gadget projects to Ableton Live as well. So that's cool. So Ableton Live Lite is, uh, yeah, it's available here. It's a kind of a mega cut down version of Ableton, which allows you to have eight scenes and eight tracks and subsequent MIDI, etc. All included, right? Here's where we set up our MIDI keyboard and link. I'm going to go input here and you'll see I have selected my Artoria Keystep 37 as my MIDI controller. Very nice. When it first came out, it didn't have that. And here you can set up some macros for mapping and stuff like that with your MIDI controller. Right, done. Okay, let's create a new set. I'm going to stop that one. Let's create a new set here. So, boing. Here is a new set, set six. We can rename this later. <clears throat> Ableton uh, Note will create three tracks for you initially, but you can have up to eight. You add tracks by adding this button here and then choosing what you would like to hit. Add, sorry, uh, for example, we're in the core library here, but we could choose some brass for this, maybe this one. And, and I'm on my MIDI keyboard, so go back to done and we're there now you'll see if we go back to our sort of set view here we have different controls down here this control will open up the scene control view where you can launch entire scenes okay you can close this in you have your mixer here and you'll see you have a master channel at the end here you can add in some master effects, channel EQ, chorus, and et cetera, saturator, reverb, stuff like that. We can go back here and you'll see it says stutter kit, strutter kit. And I'm going to play this with my MIDI controller. And you'll see it's adding MIDI notes in as we play, right? So if I go to this control, this is the, these are the controls for the kit. It's kind of self-explanatory. And then you have kit effects, pad effects. So what's this, a reverb? Okay, so there your pad effects is where you can see your sample. We can go back here. Now you will see it says no clip. But if I start playing, it doesn't matter what the tempo is. What will happen? Now you can't, you do have a metronome, by the way. You can switch it on here in metronome. But just for now, just to show you how clever the capture is, Ableton is always recording. It's always listening and it's always recording. So for example, if I go, well, I'm just jamming around. I've got this bad, I don't know. This cool drum pattern oh i like that right so i'm just going to go capture this little button here <clears throat> and ableton has tried to suss out the metronome now the speed and it looks like it said it oh it's 110 but it's not you can hear it's not quantized right this button here as soon as i tap it look here you'll see a little one sixteenth appear and it will quantize all these notes to 116. However, if I long hold on this, I get more options. So I can quantize to 164, 1 32nd, 1 16th, 1 8, 1 quarter. 1 16 is fine. We also have other things we can do here as well. We've got operations. Now, if I select this, like this you can see all the drums we've got and this way is kind of in the same way i can select just one drum 
right and i can say well let's move this up to the next the next key so this one will sound different now okay let's move it back down i can extend it if it was a longer sound with more release but since these are drums you know i can nudge it now watch Okay, but it nudges depending on the quantization. So if I set this to this, I've quantized it to one quarter, one eighth, one sixteenth, back to one quarter. And if I go to my options, I think it nudges a fixed. Yeah. So we can move it around just long hold. Let's requantize to this. Let's nudge it back a little bit. Quantize it. That'd be better. Or tap outside anywhere and it will select them all where you can quantize. Okay, then you can control the velocity for each end, each track, if you like, each drum hit. And the more you add in, the more, you know, complex it will be. Now, you'll see we've got two bars here. Let's go back to our controls. If I long hold this, I can duplicate it and I've got four bars. If I long hold it again, I can duplicate it again, and I've got eight bars. If I long hold again, I can duplicate it again, and I've got 16 bars. So you have up to 16 bars that you can add in to Ableton Note per kind of clip. Okay, we can also do cool stuff like this. Let's do this. Take it down to four, long hold on here, and just hit crop, and now we're back to four bars. We can also select sections like this. Okay, very cool. We can open this view now, and now we've got more controls. So when you're in your drums or your keyboards, they'll be slightly different. But in the drums, we can open this now and go, well, okay, I'm going to choose a pad. This, this one, I'm going to choose repeat and have it on 16th. Just hold it down and you'll see automatically it always listens and records. And if I want to add that, it's done. If we go back now and look at single, let's choose another pad. Don't worry, none of this will get added unless you hit add. In fact, you can just hit this little X button and it'll delete what you've just messed around with. Okay, so for instance, this bass, let's just clear that and go to single. This is now velocity sensitive. And you'll see I've still got repeat turned on, so I could maybe chain that into a 1-8 repeat. So just by holding the screen, it increases velocity. Very cool. We can just turn that off. And I'm just going to hit this little X to get rid of this. Unless I hit add, and then it's added to the track. And you see, can see the different velocity settings that I made. Okay, let's just undo that. Go back to pad mode and look at changing the drum kit. So maybe we can add in a few more. Let's go back to our main kind of view. Maybe we can say, what's going on here? I 
it add. And we can go into our quantization again and say, well, OK, let's quantize those. We've already quantized, it, quantized everything else. We can, of course, like I said, tap this anytime and get a more detailed view of the MIDI. And then we can, you know, pick one note. Cool, pick another one of them. Maybe this one. Maybe what's the one down? So it's a great way to add different flavors and beats and things. We can say, well, what's this one? You can nudge it, you can extend it, whatever you like. <clears throat> awesome stuff. Right, okay. Let's look at changing the actual kit out. So it co note comes with absolutely tons and tons and tons of sounds. And all you need to do is tap on the header and you can go, right, okay. Change the kit. Find another one you might like. Let's stick with the one we had. Done. And let's go back to our main view. Now, a couple of things to note here. Let's <laughs> see what I did there. Now, a couple of things to note is we can move these around anywhere we like, even onto different things, although God knows what that would sound like. We're not going to see. Let's just put it back there. If we long hold, we can duplicate this and it will put it into the next thing. And then we can go in and make further adjustments to that drum pattern. Okay, so let's look uh, further now. So we know that Ableton know adds three tracks and we've added this other one, right? So this second track is it's going to be a bass track. And you'll see exactly the same as the drums. It's going to start recording immediately as soon as you press play. And if you wait for a little bit, that will disappear. The other option is, of course, is just to click on this where it says no clip and then click on the little plus sign here and you can add up to 16 bars. So for example, we could add two bars in here. And as soon as we do this, it will start playing and I can... It still won't get added until I click add. So now we can go in and see if I made any quantizing mistakes. So initially, if I tap on this, it will quantize to 1 16th. Okay, so let's long hold this again. And we've got exactly the same options, except now if we go into operations now, we can choose any particular, right? If I go up an octave with all of them and play, they'll have all gone up an octave. If I go down, they'll be where we initially played them. If I choose one particular, nose here and take that up an octave it's just going to move that one note and this will extend or <clears throat> extend or shorten the note so for example with this bass note we'll really hear it so let's just take this down until it starts to be really really short so it's like gating the note if you know what i mean Okay, and see if that makes a difference. So, right, get that really short. There you go, really, really snappy. Now we can. And we can also nudge it. Quantize it, of course. Okay, very cool. We can also go in and just change that sound out. You've also got control over the sound. Now take note of this line along here. 
that's an automation line and it works exactly the same way as adding notes. Now if I hit add, it adds that automation in and you can add as much automation as you like. You can tap on this and then you can say, well, delete that automation, just ins insert a straight line here at the highest automation point or delete it. So you can take up to there to say, well, that's cool. So just insert that line there. Again, see the automation. Quite like that. Okay, but if you want to, you can go and change the bass out. You still got your automation. Okay, now we can add two effects in sets. So this is a delay. Again with the automation, if you want to add that automation in, just hit add. If you just want to leave it on the settings you've got, just leave it. We can go and change the effect. Maybe we like that better, but we have another insert effect as well. <clears throat> in the chorus and ensemble we could go well okay what's uh, go back to our audio effects here and have a flanger on it okay awesome stuff go back to our main screen now and let's drop this base onto here open up our clip launcher and reset clip one scene one sorry this will reset on the beat let's go to our third instrument now I'm guessing you probably want to record onto the correct clip. So if you press this, it will take you over to the instrument that you want to use. And um, we've got this brass sound here. So let's see. So let's just play. Okay, that sounded actually okay. So create clip. I oh, missed it, right? So. Quantize that. 116 is fine. Remember, we can always long hold and go into our quantize settings where we can move our notes around. Delay. Okay. And again, by the way. Go into the instrument and change out the sound. The 
maybe you like that one better. And anytime you want, you can just go in and start to overdub and see what, if you can come up with something cool. Well, that didn't sound good, so let's delete that. Okay, that might be a good lead for another track, so... Okay, so I'm pretty sure that this is a sampler track, and now I'm going to actually load in a patch. So, core library here, drums, effects, loops, chords, stabs, maybe some texture, uh, crackle tuning might be nice, so hit done, and now I've got this. Let's go into our main thing here. Maybe again, look at say, um, oh, we got some wind. Hit done. Or you may not want to use the sample. You can also import your own samples, by the way. You may not want to use your own sample. You may just want to go back and say, well, oops, sorry about that. Let me go back onto my sampler. Go here, go back to core library and choose, I don't know, maybe um, a mallet sound, uh, analog chime. Let's see what that sounds like. Okay, and you might want to record some of that in. So let's just hit done. We've got our sound. Maybe we want to put some reverb on that one. It selected the reverb for us, so you can go in and change it here, like I said. But don't want to do that, so we're going to leave it under reverb. Let's go back to our main view here, and I'm going to long hold the scene and duplicate the scene. Okay, so now I'm going to select this one, which is this analog chime. I'm just going to play the track. Okay. Long hold. One ties one sixteen. Awesome stuff. Okay. Now, of course, you can go on and on. You can add up to eight instruments, of course, and you can add up to eight scenes. And then anything you want to do with clips in between is absolutely fine. Um, when you've done, if you want to export this as just an audio file, right? All you need to do is, while you're in this view, is click on this little icon here, okay, and go export audio. And then you can export your audio as a wave, an M4A, you can cancel it, you can, you can export, once you choose it, you can export it, right? And you can export it, basically it'll bounce it and then it'll say share. And you say, where is it? Now it exports the actual, the whole thing as, as like one complete track. So you could say, well, I'll, I'll, I'll stick it in, I don't know, my iPad, maybe put it into Cubase, Cubasis, I could put it into audio, I could put it into my samples and go save. And what that'll do is if I open Cubasis now, and I'll just go with a new project and I'll just, I'll just leave it as call it create new project for time. We've got an audio track here. Go to media, go to audio, my samples, double click on that. Um, there it is, set number six, five and a half meg. And if we play it. It will play through the whole kind of track.
Okay, cool. So you get the idea there. That's how that works. Let's get back <laughs> to um, Ableton Note. Here we go right now. So that's on this page here on the actual set page, right? That's where you export your audio. Not you don't do that here in the settings, which is a little bit confusing, right? This is where you would export it to the well, it's not even where you'd export it to cloud, actually. So if you want to export your set that you've just done now, we know this is called set six, right? This one, right? It's still going to play the whole thing. It'll just play a portion of it. But click on these three little dots here and you can <laughs> duplicate that project. You can choose some artwork from your photo library. You can take a photo. You can upload it. You can share to now this shares the Ableton project file. OK, it shares what would be normally uploaded to Ableton Cloud. But if you don't have Ableton Cloud or you just don't want to use it, export it to Dropbox or something or some other cloud sharing service. It will export the file, the proper file, and you can just drag it, drop it into Ableton Live Lite, which I'm going to be showing you in another video. But if you want to upload it to Ableton Cloud, right? Just do this. And what happens now is there you go. It's up, it's done. It's uploaded to Ableton Cloud. So if I was to go into Ableton Live Lite now on my computer, it would be there. Set six would be there. I can I can rename it here or I can rename it there, etc. So that's how you export your sets and stuff over to Ableton. Very cool, very easy. Again, you can just create. It's so easy to create a, 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 a song here. You know, you basically going in you can set your metronome or like i said and it chooses a random kit so we can go right let's just go back now you see that piano that's because i have cubases open so i'm just gonna mute that piano let's go back here to able now it's i've captured that so i'm gonna undo the capture now Okay, let's capture that. Long hold this, quantize it straight off. Let's add a bass. Create clip. Look at this. Let's get rid of this bar. Don't hit, by the way, don't hit delete on that section. I'm gonna add them in. I'm gonna quantize, bring this one back in. Back. Go to your next instrument. I don't know what they've chosen. It's another sampler. Don't want that. Let's go to say core library. Need to go back again. Hang on. Choose this. Go with some synth keys, maybe. Now, don't forget, you can also choose the amount of bars you want. Add, quantize. rubbish look so just delete that don't even need to add it let's go with a saturator here which is really nice
back to audio effects. It's really simple this thing. And then we could maybe make some so duplicate. and then take some of these out you build up your track like that you know don't forget you can hide that if you want to or at any time, go into the instrument and make some adjustments with the keys. You've got a keys layout here, a pads layout. Don't forget you can set your time signature up here to, to anything in particular. It won't make any difference, you know, because this is now referring to what's going on on here. If I record something in, right, hit add, what you'll see now, stop this, you'll see that this is like a little plus with it, what this means, is this is duplicate, now if I go back to my um, track here, you'll see I've highlighted, sorry, let me just stop that, if we look at this, if I go in here, right i'm on that instrument right if i hit this clip three is duplicated so clip three is now duplicated to here and you can do this with any of these what happens is if if for example i've i duplicate this one right which i sorry it keeps starting i can hold this and i can duplicate the clip Exactly the same as if I go in here, I can duplicate it here as well. But what will happen is it will duplicate this clip to the next available slot in, in the instrument. OK, so for example, look, I'll duplicate this and I'll stick it here. OK, so that, that's something you can look at as well. But export options are great. You can export it. You can't export the stems. But that kind of makes sense because they really want you to use Ableton Live, right? So I'm going to show you in another video how to export it from here. We'll I'll create a, 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 a short session so you can see how that's done. And then we'll open it in Ableton Live Lite and make some adjustments to it in there as well. Very cool. It does compact, packed with really great sounds. I mean, although you can't can't use your external AUV 3s you can export this stuff and build on it like you saw like that audio tracking Cubases you could chop that up in Cubases and extend it this I mean these are look within strings at the moment if I click sorry go back to my core library we've got brass bass we've got the drum rack which is all the drum kits and stuff actually no sorry drum drum rack is different I've chosen this drum rack and clicked on use core library drums I had a bongo in and now I've added a bongo and then I could choose and then choose another pad here maybe and so now So you can build your own drum kit with a drum rack. Okay, like that. Go back in here, so done here. Drum rack. Oh, you've got evolving. I guess these are kind of like, oh, oh, they're nice, aren't they? Listen, so these are all the different sounds.
you can use, and there are loads of them. Anyway, thank you very, very much for watching. In the next video that features Ableton Note, we'll also feature Ableton Live, and that'll just be the how to get your stuff over there. But hopefully by now, you'll know how to get your stuff going. I, I love the, the automatic capture record. I think that's absolutely brilliant. Don't forget you've got your mixer. You've also got the ability to add two inserts on your mixer. So go back to audio effects. Maybe you want an EQ on there, for example, and then you've got, I don't know, done smooth default EQ done. And you can, you know, play around with the entire mix EQ here. And you'll see it says EQ. And you can also add another effect in as well. Anyway, right top job and these are automatically saved for you if we go to our main thing here and go back you'll see set seven so the one i've just done i'm gonna open this one called maybe and play you out with this which i made yesterday just for fun um but yeah you get that you get the idea anyway top job i'll see you later ta -da.